Hello, I'm Jay, owner of Volunteer Audio in Oliver Springs, Tennessee. This is part four of a four-part series we've put together on flashing your factory radio. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to properly take your techno research tool, connect it to your computer and your bike, how to download the software, where to get it to go through that process, how to put in a license code and the correct flash to use when you're going to flash your stock radio. We'll go over what this does, why you need it, and how to do it. So stay tuned and watch the rest of the video. All right, so even though this is part four of a four-part series, you may not have watched the other three videos yet. So I'm gonna go over a little bit of information in there. I'll try not to bore you if you watch the other ones. First off, we're gonna flash the radio in this Harley-Davidson because we're installing an aftermarket amplifier. If you're upgrading speakers and not adding an amplifier, there is no need to flash your radio unless you're adding rear speakers to a bike that only had front speakers. You also, if you have a Hogtunes amplifier or a Kenwood Exelon amp that was made in conjunction with Hogtunes, do not need to flash your radio. All other aftermarket amplifiers, we find that it's better to flash your radio. So what we're doing when we flash this term, we're actually selecting a box in the back of the radio and we're just saying we have an amp going on uh, to this radio. And what it's gonna do is four things at the same time. We're gonna activate rear speakers if they've not been activated. We're also going to correct a bass boost that wants to blow most aftermarket speakers once amplified. We're also gonna make the EQ, even though it's boosted from the factory, it changes when the engine runs. We're gonna fix that so our EQ is consistent with or without the engine running so we can properly set our amplifiers. Last but not least, we are going to also be changing the output voltage of the radio. So when we flash it, it's gonna lower its output to a cleaner signal. So at full volume on your radio, you have far less distortion and the signal is much better going into your amp. Your amp's gonna like that signal better as well, which means you're not gonna send distortion into your speakers and your whole system's gonna sound better and last a lot longer. So we're gonna have to do this with a techno research programmer. Now I will tell you, your local Harley Davidson dealership cannot do what you're gonna see us do today unless they bought one of these tools. Harley years ago locked their digital tech tool out of doing this unless a factory amplifier is seen on the data lines. If you wanna know more information, more in depth about the flash we're going to do today, watch those previous three videos. But one other thing that I will say is at the end, after this is all said and done, there are a couple things that you're going to see about your bike that there's no way to stop. First off, you're going to have a fader in your radio that's visible, but that fader is not going to function. At Volunteer Audio, if you're using one of our plug and play amps, rest assured, when you buy an amplifier tuned for a factory radio, we already fade it slightly to the rear in our amp settings to compensate for that. But that option will be visible, but not work. Fading was in the factory amp, which we're not using factory amps. The other thing, if you ever run diagnostics on your radio, you're gonna get two codes. They're gonna be U codes saying that it cannot communicate with the factory boom amplifiers because we're gonna use a factory boom amplified flash and there are no amplifiers there for it to find. So this is normal. It will not cause a check engine light or anything to come up or illuminate. So that's what I need to let you know ahead of time. Those are the only two things that you're really gonna find as a code you can't get rid of, but doesn't cause any problems. And you're not gonna have fader even though you've activated those rear channels. But you're gonna have a much better sounding sound system. And this is the best you can do with a factory radio. If these things concern you, Soundstream Reserve makes some amazing aftermarket radios. We sell at Volunteer Audio. We'd love to talk to you about that and go over that. You would retain fade with one of those radios and many other features. Now, requirements for your computer. You do have to have a Windows-based PC. It does have to have Windows 7 or newer, and you do have to have internet access in your garage or wherever your Harley is. So let's move on. I'm gonna take you to the computer. I'm gonna show you how to download the software. In a minute, I'll get back with you. And I'll show you how to plug everything up and connect it to the bike, and we'll finish off by flashing it at the end. All right, so to download your software, you're gonna to wanna to go to technoresearch.info. So here we go, www.technoresearch.info. All right, so once you get to the Techno Research webpage, you're gonna to wanna to click on support and you're gonna to go to downloads. 
All right, once it downloads, we're just going to come down here and we're going to download the Techno Research software. It shows to be 300 megabytes. Over time, this file size may change. And if it does, just go ahead and download the Techno Research software. Let's click Download Faster. All right, you're going to see a download tab open up on your browser, and it's now downloading that software. Now, this could take some time, so we're going to wait for that to finish up, and then we'll move forward. All right, so it's almost finished. It does say it's 319 megabytes on my download compared to the 300 megabytes on the site. Don't let that bother you. Just get it done. Once you get it done, I want you to go up to it. I want you to click that file or find it in your downloads and act, make that file active. Let's see if it's all the way finished. looks to be. All right, so we're going to click Open File. Would you like Techno Research to make changes to your computer? You're going to say yes to this. Setup is now ready to begin installation, so we're going to click Install. All right, so as various pop-ups come up, just go ahead and do whatever they say. So here we're going to extract the USB drivers. I'm going to tell them they're allowed to install. You have to accept the agreement. Read it if you want. Finish that. And then you're going to restart the computer. All right, so now that you've got your computer rebooted, restarted, you're going to find the Techno Research Launcher uh, on your desktop and select that. So it can make changes to your computer. It's going to have a little pop-up window that I'm going to have to cut off here. But here is our Techno Research Launcher. So once this is up, we're ready to move on to the bike. So continue to watch. I'm going to show you how to get to the port on the bike and where to plug it in. And then we'll go from there. We'll hop back on the computer and we'll flash the, uh, flash the motorcycle with the correct flash for your upgraded amp. All right, so now that we've got your software downloaded to your computer and we've got our screen brought up, we've got to go to the bike and we've got to get it connected. So you should have got two packages from Volunteer Audio. You should have got one package that's going to have your Alaris tool and your USB cable. We want to take the smaller end of that cable and we're going to plug it into the end of our tool. And we're then going to take that other end, the larger USB-A end, and we're going to plug it into our computer. All right, so moving on to our bike, we have to connect to our bike. If you have a 2014 to 2020 model, you're going to have a gray plug where we're going to plug in here in a minute. This one being a 21 and up has a red connector, and I'll show you right where to get to it. It's going to be behind this panel, but to access that panel first, we're going to remove our saddlebag. So you're going to have two retainers here that you're going to twist loose. Some of you are going to have a quarter turn on the older box. The new ones are full thread all the way out. So we're going to undo that. Now, if you have any factory amplifiers or lighting or anything with plugs behind here, make sure you unplug those as well. This bike doesn't have any of that. So I'm just going to undo those and set my bike, uh, the bag aside. All right, so now that you've remo removed your bag, it's going to be very easy to pull the side panel off. It just pushes in with some pressure clips. Very easy to remove. We're just going to set it up here in the seat. Now, that's going to expose this panel. And you're going to see on this bike, we have this red connector is plugged into a little block off port. So that's just, just holding it there. So this is the connector we're going to use. So we're going to grab our connector that came with our tool. And you're going to see that it matches not only in size, but also in color. If you do not have this red connector, you need the gray connector that was from 14 to 20. 21 and up is going to be like this. So we're going to take the other end of our cable. We're going to plug it into our Alaris tool. So there you go. One end is connected to the bike, other end connected to the computer. At that point, we can actually just click on our Alaris software and we can bring it up. But the next thing, you do have to have the ignition on on the bike. I would tell you to go ahead and run it over to accessory. If I put it in an accessory, you're not running your headlight, you're not running your battery down as you go through this process. All right, I'll take you to the computer and we'll go through how to do the flash. Okay, so now that we have our tool connected to our bike and our bike is in the run position, we're going to click on Centurion, which is for our audio. It's up here at the top. It says Alaris as well. So double click this top box. That's going to bring up our next screen. We're going to have to tell it our location and accept their terms and conditions. So we're going to hit accept and then select your language. All right, so I'm going to do this today with one of our rental tools that's going to require a license to be put in. Now, if you did get the new tool, the new tool has a does not require a license. It is inside of the tool already, inside the software already. So if your piece of paper says it's a new tool and doesn't need a license, you can skip this step. 
If your piece of paper that came with your tool has a license code, you're going to need to do what we're doing now. So go up here to the top where it says license, and I want you to click that license box. It's going to say single user locked. So now I'm going to hit add paper bike license. And that's going to bring up that this particular tool already has had two licenses put in it. It's been used on two other bikes in the past. Uh, I'm now going to go in and hit add license. And by doing so, it's going to give me the box to put my new license in. And as you see here, zero of two are available. So I'll hit Add License. Now you're going to enter in your code. Now make sure that you put this in correctly. All of the dashes have to be put in place. And anything that could be an O is going to be a zero. So we're going to get that typed in. All right, so now that I have my license code entered in, and don't think you can use this one, <laughs> it's not going to work because we're using it right now. So once your code is in, all capital letters, make sure anything that you think is an O is actually a zero, uh, and then sit, hit OK to enter that code in. All right, so now we'll see that it says available. See, the other two are already tied to a VIN number. This one says available, so now we're going to hit OK, and we're going to move on to flashing our bike. So, as you'll see, Volunteer Audio is actually a manufacturer option over here under Radio Configuration. So next, I want you to click on Volunteer Audio and then click on the Volunteer Audio Recommended Flash for installing aftermarket amplifiers, and then click the hand to start the uh, process of doing the flash. So now it's connecting to our bike. So it's gonna say setting, and here in a second it's gonna say past, which means we're gonna be done. Now you're going to get a message if you have the tool that you just put the license code in saying originally it was locked to another VIN. Just hit OK. And it's going to continue forward. So now it says setting. And now we're going to wait for it to say passed. All right, so now that it says passed, we've got our flash done. And all we've got to do now is follow what it says on screen. We're going to turn the ignition off. We're going to wait 13 seconds. Then we're going to turn it back on. So after that, I want you to hit OK. All right, so now that you've got your radio flashed correctly, let's do the next part. If you're an Apple user and you want to activate your Apple CarPlay and you don't want to have to have a WIM and a headset connected, go up here to Speaker Configuration. I want you to go to Audio Outputs and Nav. I want you to go here. You'll see there's a bunch of options. Don't select any of these other options. Don't just click things. It's going to mess things up. But click the hand next to Bluetooth Phone WIM CarPlay. When it comes up, I want you to click WIM, because WIM equals CarPlay. And if you'll hit Enable, this is going to make your Apple CarPlay work anytime you plug it into the USB without having to have a headset connected. So we're going to hit OK. Now, same thing here. It's going to do what is called setting. When you see setting, that means it's communicating with your bike. And when it's finished, it's going to say pass. So we're just going to click it one time and be patient. As you see, it still says setting. Now it says passed. Again, all we have to do now to be done is cycle our ignition off, wait 13 seconds, set it back on. You're done. Now it's time to go unplug everything from the uh, bike. If this is a rental, now's a good time to package it up. Put your prepaid return label on it and send it back to Volunteer Audio. If you're going to keep it, uh, you can purchase an additional license in the future to do other bikes, or you can flash your bike as many times as you want. Now, this tool does have some other really cool things that it can do. Uh, it can actually read diagnostic codes and some other things you might want to do also. So if you keep it, it could be a very handy tool for you. But now I'm just going to hit OK, and we're going to uh, package everything back up. All right, so now that we've got our flash complete, we're just going to disconnect from the bike. So we're going to unplug here, making sure that we plug our red uh, connector back into its port and then put our side cover back on. I'm going to go ahead and grab our tool, unplug it, and rebag it like it was. Be careful just to roll up your USB. You don't want to kink it or mess it up in the process. Now, your license code that was used was a one-time code, but it's married to the VIN of your bike. So if you decide to keep this tool, it's going to work on your bike over and over. So, but make sure and just keep that code just in case you were able to lose the software or the tool. 
Uh, even if you send the tool back to us, if you kept that code, if you got another, cool, uh, another tool in the future, if you put that license code in, it's gonna work for your bike. Then you're gonna take your vehicle specific connector. Now, some of you may have got a connector that fits either bike. Sometimes we actually have one that has both ends, but we're gonna assume that you just got the one end. If you return it to Volunteer Audio within 14 days, we're gonna return or refund part of what you paid, and we call that a rental program. So if that's your uh, thoughts, that's what you're gonna do, go ahead and do that now. Now, we get asked all the time, when do I flash my radio? You flash your radio before you listen to your new system. So whether you install the amp before or after, I would tell you to flash it at the very beginning. That way you don't run into any problems, and when you get done, you can check out and listen to it right away. Now, one side effect of flashing is it does turn the radio down. So you wanna wait till you're ready to work on the bike to do that flash because you don't wanna be riding around with half volume until you get a day off to put your amp in. So last step is reinstalling that bag onto the bike. Make sure that you get your fasteners good and tight. We don't want it to fall off going down the road. All right, so at this point in the video, you have successfully flashed your Harley Davidson. You've done what your local dealership couldn't do and you're ready to put your new aftermarket amplifier in. If you wanna know more about flashing your bike, watch the whole series. This was four videos and this was the last of those four videos. Now, if you don't care and you just trust what we say and you're just putting your amp in, then this video is all you needed to do your install. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that you've subscribed to Volunteer Audio. If you haven't, you need to do it right now. You can also follow us on Facebook and we share videos of the latest in Harley Audio. I'll show you new products. I'll show you processes. I'll show you how to install and I'll show you how to use those products that you've purchased. So you get the most out of them even after the fact. If you have questions or comments on other things you want me to do, definitely share those below and like this video. Liking the video is free to you. It helps us a lot and it helps other people find information they need as well. Thank you so much for your support, your encouragement, all the calls. And speaking of calls, if you have more questions and you need help finding that perfect system for your Harley Davidson, if you want to talk about your budget, your bike, your build, and what you want to do, and you want to get the right system the first time, feel free to call our sales team. We have a great sales staff. They're extremely knowledgeable. They'd love to talk to you at one 844 audio If you're more of the do-it-yourselfer, you want to search all of our packages, take the time to look at them on your own, maybe call with some questions, check out volunteeraudio.com. You'll see we have an awesome section for plug-and-play amp and speaker packages. Just select your year, make, and model a bike and it's gonna tell you all the different ones we have available so you can compare pricing and so on. As always, thank you so much for watching and God bless.